From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Well, welcome to Viewpoint and a happy Mother's Day. I'm your host, Joe Paris, and as the program title explains, Viewpoint, we are here to share viewpoints from across the community and across our Idaho. And on this Mother's Day special, we've got a great show for you. Taking inventory on a crucial new survey just published this past week, Gallup Polling and the group Supreme Moms released a new report and analysis with new data from over 4,000 Idahoans on the roles, experiences, and needs of mothers in our communities. Big topic and the findings show that while most people acknowledge mothers are essential to families and community, many mothers do not have the help and support they need. And we have an exclusive in-depth look at the data and conversation for you this morning. I want to introduce you to Shannon McGuire, mother of four and the founder of Supreme Moms and the founder and CEO, the chief empowerment officer of Spark Strategic Solutions right here in Idaho. They do a lot of consultancy and they help build leaderist and creative community. Uh, communities. You also just we could do this all hour. Also the founder of the project 8B, a nonprofit that invests in generation of caring bridge builders and improved mental and emotional well-being. Uh, Shannon, thanks for joining us. This will air on Mother's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you. I know as a mother of four, um, just to start off, you know, what does Mother's Day mean to you on a personal note? Oh my gosh, it's funny because for me, Mother's Day is my day. It's the day I take to myself. So I, I have, have lunch with my kids and spend time, but it's a day I stop and I reflect because for me, I became a mother early. So I was a mother at 18. So the journey, I'm a grandmother now, by the way. So this is my first like grandmother's day. Uh, so I take time to reflect and think about the honorable role of being a mom because it, it means different things to, to different women, and we'll talk about that coming up uh, throughout the program. Uh, I, I, I think we should start with Supreme Moms, mm -hmm. uh, the group, and you might have seen it here on Idaho Today, here on News Channel 7, but uh, Supreme Moms, for starters, I guess, what is Supreme Moms? What do you guys do? Yeah, it's all about joy, fun, and love. So we want to spread more joy, fun, and love and using mom wisdom. You know, the nuggets that you learn from raising kids, being a kid, remembering all the things. So we like to say, how can we raise the vibration being laughter, joy, fun. So, and the big crux of it is helping moms reinvest in their me time, mental, emotional time. Because the Supreme, S-U-P-R-M-E moms, uh, in terms of getting me time as a mom, how crucial is that? And is there, I guess, a change in the mindset over the last 15, 20 years? Oh, it's so crucial, Joe. One of the things that I keep thinking about is, okay, hindsight is always 2020, the pandemic. And we saw this moment in humanity where moms were like there battling front lines and everything was pushed to the back burner in a way. And here we are four years later, which is hard to believe, but the mental and emotional time is imperative because we talk self-care. Self-care has become commercialized. Yeah. You go take a break, go get a pedicure, go do your hair, this and that. But taking time to just say, wait, how am I? And checking in with oneself, like, oh, it's so important because moms are usually the source of recharge for their families or the node, like the octopus in everything. So when moms feel good about being themselves, then everyone else in the household and in their view will feel good about being themselves. So I feel like a little bit of a ramble, but me time is imperative because it's a reset of just our, our parasympathetic and our thinking, our feeling, our intuition. So I am a big proponent of recharging. Take your me time. I remember speaking with the parent in the newsroom not too long ago and she was joking, but she said, you know, moms are people too. And <laughs> it's a joke, but at the same time, you can forget, you know, as, as a child and you're growing up, I mean, as an adult, you realize, what our parents did for us, the sacrifices they make, and at the same time, they had their own personal life going on at the same time. It's, it's complicated to handle. It really is. I was in the kitchen with my kiddos, so I have four across two generations, so daughter 23, and then boy is 20, I have to think in my head, uh, 11, and soon to be six. And so I'm surrounded by the little ones making dinner, and everyone has to think, I didn't get enough, he ate first, this, this, and that. And at the end, I didn't have anything because I gave the food away, it's easier to please them. And my 11-year-old stopped and finally looked around and was like, but mom has to eat too. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh my God, thank you for seeing me. And it, it's weird because on one hand, it's one of the most honorable, it is the most honorable role, but there's so much giving. And as moms, it, there's this weird deflection that happens, not just from moms, but with the mom conversation of, well, moms, but what about the kids? And what about them? And we forget about moms. And so everything that we're doing is saying, don't forget about mom. 
Beyond Mother's Day, every day is Mom's Day. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, okay, so this, this new report uh, from Gallup just published, Built with Care, Unifying Communities Through Motherhood. I think we have a digital copy that we can put up. I've got the, the copy here, right here. Um, okay, so as we go through a little bit of this report, um, for you, for starters, why did Spark and Gallup, who you worked with, why did you guys go through this and uh, develop this report? What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, being seen and heard as mothers. And so I, after the pandemic started, do, well, during the pandemic and after, started just doing a lot of research on moms. What data do we have? What is there? And usually there's maternal data. There's data about the experience in healthcare and whatnot. And then it jumps to working women. And then it'll say working moms. And so I'm like, where is the data? So I reached out to Gallup and was like, there's data missing. They're like, really? Really? And so we partnered and the premise was, let's talk to Idahoans and Idaho moms about what their lived experience is. Not just national, because national conversation, I get it where we're talking about unpaid labor, gender equity, all of these things. But there's something missing and we wanted that something missing to be told by moms and starting right here at home in Idaho. So our collaboration was really about raising the voice of moms and Idahoans and what are they feeling and thinking. And let's just start there, right there. And this is a very revealing report. And you know, as I went through, I mean, it's 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 a good 30-page report, and there's a lot of stuff in it that you know I never had thought of as a man, to be honest. I don't have that same perspective, and I you know hadn't mentally prepared myself to be a mom one day. But let's center on some of the key uh, findings of the report. Something that stuck out to me: a third of mothers describe themselves as feeling tired or burned out. That's 38 percent. Was that surprising to you? No. No, not really. I thought it would be higher, hmm. honestly. And because of all of the things when we look at moms as homemakers and community makers and all the responsibilities and the things that they do, and I thought, wow, they're not as burned out as I thought, but still 38% is a lot. It's still a lot. And when I got that stat, there's another stat in there about emotional support. You're the emotional support for your family, but also your friends. And again, going back, what are they doing to take care of themselves? And burnout is an interesting topic because a lot of it is like the work overloading. You're doing too many tasks. We don't talk about the emotional drain. I'm angry. Are you acknowledging it? I'm sad. Are you acknowledging it? And the emotions in the background humming, they then jump to the brain. And so the burnout sometimes is just the head heart disconnect. And those are the things that we wanna go train moms to say, like, just take your me time by acknowledging who you are. So the burnout, the guilt, the shame, those things are what I believe is burning moms out more than I have so much to do. I'm thinking too much, but I'm feeling deeply, but I'm not acknowledging my feelings. That, ooh, that's my jam. And that burnout is, is something that uh, to me, it seems like a pretty, you know, it's a strong describer because when we talk about burnout in professional worlds, for example, you'd say, oh, get a new job. <laughs> well, if you're a mom, you can't just get a new kid. Get a new kid. No. I mean, you can. You pop out the kid you and you're like, yeah. I did it again. Yeah. I did it again. <laughs> Why did two. I do it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. And additionally, you know, outside of the burnout, you know, uh, more than half, 54%, they report, you know, they're feeling stressed a lot of the day. Yes. That wasn't surprising to me at all. I actually thought 54% was low. Um, yes. Your perspective, curious. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. I have to just oppose that stat with the others where the paradox of emotions where while stressed, they still over 80% experience high levels of gratitude. And then there's hope and joy and happiness. But the stress is there. And the reason I love that stat about stress compared to the others is that it shows the paradox that we experience in one day. While the stress is high, we still have gratitude, joy, and hope and those things. But it doesn't mean that there aren't moments in a day we don't feel well. And Stress, you know, they say it's a silent killer and it's so important to acknowledge that stress. And going back to the emotions, just saying I feel stressed and anchoring it into a definition of what that stress is, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated and those things can mitigate that. And gratitude is the gateway to joy. And so the gratitude just gave me so much hope. I mean, it was the, the number one. But the stress and the burden of motherhood, I think, comes from us not taking the pause time to really acknowledge ourselves in the, the space. So stress, yeah, I, I thought about that. The stress eating, I stress eat cookies all the time. So I'm just looking at my cookie purchases like, okay, you're stressed. Yeah. Stop, stop. <laughs>
Uh, in terms of perspective, there was a stat that stuck out to me, and it was just something I hadn't thought about. 74% of Idaho mothers, they support the notion that being a mother is the most important part of who I am as a person, real identity. And when you talk about identity and being a mother, what is, I guess, the juxtaposition there, and kind of what does that statistic mean to you? Yes, yeah, you know, for about the last six years, Joe, I would go around and introduce myself as, above all else, I'm a mom. It's something I started to do because I see, I've seen in the workplace, particularly professional workplaces, where motherhood takes a, a step back, a large step back. You don't wear it. So I would start saying this, above all else, I'm a mom. And I would get these moms that come around and they're like, thank you, thank you, group hug. And when I saw that validating stat, 74%, nearly three out of four say that's the most important part of who they are. I thought, yes, yes, my hypothesis is correct that it is something that we want to walk into the space with, whether it's work, our volunteerism and whatnot. That doesn't mean we want to give you the phone and keep talking about our kids, but knowing that that's an important part of who we are. So the decisions we make, if I want to take time off and go to my kid's field trip, if I need to take the day off because my kid is sick, I. And now that you know that that's an important part of who I am, now we have a connection and you understand. Versus why are you doing that? You should be working. So that stat to me, it really melted my heart. It was like, and then my husband, I remember he's like, I'm surprised that's just not higher. I'm like, well, in the day and time we live in, being a woman, that's what the message is. I am a woman, hear me roar, woman, woman. And we forget that a large subset of women are mothers. So I, that stat, I was like, let's go. Were you surprised, I guess, when you have conversations with moms? Do you, do you find moms who, I guess, just don't even broach the topic of identity? They don't, they're just, yes. they don't even think about it. Yes, this is one that I do. I, and I'm a deep person. I say a mermaid. I love to go deep in the emotions. That's where you find the fun. And I will say, if you strip away everything that is you, your title, your, your roles, all of that, just lay it bare what's left. And they're like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about who I am because if I lay it bare, I'm afraid I won't find myself. So identity is a big one. I call that the tangled mom syndrome, hmm. where you're so lost in the roles that you play and you're chasing the yeses that you've given to all of these other people in your life that you've forgotten who you are. And I actually penned a memoir, well, third memoir, I guess, um, about that journey for myself because it all started over mud. Something as simple as my kids playing in the mud and splattering mud on the house, I lost my mind. <laughs> And I wasn't the person that I knew I was. And it gave me a strong pause to say, like, who am I? And so that was prompted when I moved to Idaho and this environment gave me quiet. So identity is one that is really tough for a lot of moms because it's an identity fog and fatigue. Mm -hmm. And post pandemic especially, who am I now? Who am I now? So that's the work that we really are focusing on with moms. And that's why me time is important. You won't solve it over the course of one afternoon, yeah. but micro time investments and me time and thinking through that, oh, you will find yourself and you'll realize she's already there in the heart. So, and he, because the supreme mom's notion, mom's first, caregiving and being a caring bridge builder is so important. But we hypothesize, invest in moms will change the world. So. That's what we're doing. Okay, we have to take a real quick break, but uh, we will be right back with our guest Shannon McGuire, our Mother's Day special right here on Viewpoint. Lowe's knows your spring projects are adding up, so we're keeping prices down. You can get everything you need for less. Finish the season strong inside and out. And with the My Lowe's Rewards credit card, you can save 5% every day. Hurry and shop spring deals now at Lowe's. Bowman Funeral was started as a vision by a family to help families. Throughout the years, that vision has stayed the same. We offer high quality services and arrangements in a family atmosphere from a family to your family. We've been here since 2004 with a goal in mind to offer families informed financial decisions and help them make an informed financial decision. We invite you to stop by, call us, or visit us online. We are Bowman Funeral. It's quiet neighborhood shopping Monday through Saturday at Easy Chair Plus and Mattress on Eustick Road in Boise. You'll find a large selection of power lift recliner chairs in a variety of sizes with multiple features like heat and massage, power adjustable headrest, and lumbar support. Or zero gravity with infinite positions for pain relief and sleeping. Even chairs with 500 pound lift and capacity are available. If you're having surgery anytime soon, plan ahead and consider a new lift chair from Easy Chair Plus and Mattress on Eustick Road in Boise. This is Stephanie's favorite view, where Stephanie becomes Stephanie. This makes Stephanie think ironing is fun, sometimes. 
We know Stephanie, so we added this for outfits for gardening, dancing, and closing the deal. That's a smart outfit. This is a smart drawer. Like Stephanie, there's always room for surprises. This is Stephanie's Closet, a space designed by California Closets, a company built on listening to Stephanie and you. Schedule your free design consultation now. Net Credit is here to say yes, even when other lenders won't. Apply online in minutes and get funds deposited the next business day or sooner. Net Credit, credit to the people. Hey, welcome back to Viewpoint, our Mother's Day special. Joe Parrish, Shannon McGuire here with you. Uh, Shannon, we're talking still about this Gallup poll that you guys worked on in terms of moms and resources. Something that stuck out to me here, social support and community cohesion, critical to a mother's role. What exactly do you think that means? Yeah, you know, I go back to community cohesion and the, the fact that you can turn to your neighbors for help. Do you see people working together? Do you feel people are treated res with respect? Are you, can you use your voice? So the cohesion piece is so important because that's the part of the unifying and how we work together. So oftentimes we think about resources for moms and we go to the tangibles. Do they have access to healthcare? Do they have the education? All those things are so important. Are their kids taken care of? But we forget are we being good neighbors? Are we being kind? Are we asking them what they need? Are we offering when they don't ask? Because I know we're gonna go there. But the cohesion piece is so important. It's the fabric of community and why we're why we exist. So yeah. When I look through the report and you look at the five key elements of community cohesion, you know, one, I can turn to my neighbors, I can express my opinions without fear of repercussions. I was surprised to find that there was such a chunk of women that yeah. felt they couldn't, I guess really express themselves and yeah. talk about who, how they feel. And I, I guess I feel bad because I wonder how many women are going through life with this internalized, I guess, trauma maybe? Mm. And they just can't even express it because they feel the people around them aren't receptive or don't know how to listen to it. Um, when you hear something about that, you know, to me it's moms bottling things up. What type of, I guess, reception do you have to that? Yeah, my mom has a saying that she raised me with, closed mouths don't get fed. And I would always think about that. Now she did this in context to speaking of ask for what you want, but the notion of not using your voice, it's very personal to me. And sitting here with you now in this report is so imperative because I was one of those moms that just sat back and stayed quiet. And I think about the missing ideas and information and experience and perspective because moms don't feel comfortable speaking up. And it's a mixture of things. It's I'm fearful of repercussions. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to be rejected. I don't think anyone's listening. So that stat over half reported that they're not comfortable speaking up. So it's it's powerful. When we revisit the idea of motherhood and, and your conclusion really sum this up as, you know, there's some, some steps we could take as a community, not just here in Idaho, but this could really translate other places. Mm -hmm. What steps in terms of, you know, people watching this at home could you tangibly make to help the mothers in your life or prospective mothers in your life to make them understand that it's okay to be a mom and maybe I haven't been receptive to this before, but I've seen this episode, I've seen this report, let's get into it. Yeah, how are you mom? How are you mothers? And just listen. And at first they may not want to tell you and it may just pour out. Sometimes when making dinner, taking care of kiddos, doing the laundry, we don't see moms as those human beings. That's my mom. Like there's an ownership to it. My mom, you're mine. And just stopping and saying, how are you? And asking them how they are. And the other, because there was a stat in there about asking for help, you know, 44% of Idaho mothers, um, almost half need more help and 80% of those aren't comfortable asking for it. Sometimes we just need to offer, offer it. So I think those are the two easiest, cheap, non-costing things to do. And as we look at uh, actually this graphic we have up on the screen right now, the question is I make time uh, to take care of my physical well-being and then emotional well-being underneath it. There's uh, some very telling statistics here that there's a good chunk of women that disagree with the idea that they should have time mm -hmm. to take care of their physical and emotional well-being. I was very surprised to see that. Yeah, the, and that's why we focus on mental and emotional well-being. The physical side, you know, we live in a really beautiful state where we have access to the outdoors everywhere. But taking that time and pausing, there's a guilt. If I take care of me, who's going to take care of them? I, if I put myself first, that's selfish, but it isn't. And taking the time to invest in self. We heard this during the airplane rides, the pandemic, you have to put yours on first. Your mask, you have to take care of you first. Easier said than done. 
easier said than done. And that's the support of community. And that's what we're building one mom at a time, groups at a time and going and saying, take the space to recharge individually and together. And now you can anchor into a supportive, like-hearted community of folks that are there for you. And like, get your me time. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, extensive report that has got a lot of great numbers in it, but I also really appreciated some of the quotes that, yes. that were coming in here. And I wanna just read one, uh, this one from Nick H. Mothers are how you know how a community is doing. They'll talk to one another, share the information, and ensure that everybody in the community is cared for. When you hear a quote like that, mm. What, I guess, what does that say to you as a mother and as somebody who is part of this, this data? Yeah, it melts my heart and it really sums up the big why we're doing this because we, we're starting with Idaho. Idaho is going first and next we're going national to survey moms and understand. That quote really sim simplifies moms as an indicator of community well-being. If we check in on our moms and understand how they're doing, then we can look across the spectrum and look at mental health outcomes and how our kiddos are doing, how our spouses are doing, just by understanding how moms are doing. So Nick H, I love you. It, he, that quote put into words something I've been trying to say but couldn't find. In terms of community cohesion, going back to that for a second, what advice or what, I guess, perspective do you think this report kind of brought out in terms of what we can do as a greater community, not just as a husband, not just as a family, but as a greater community? Because we've all seen moms in the grocery store struggling. And I wonder sometimes, should I go over and like, do you need help? I don't want to insult her. Like, we've all seen this on an yes. airplane, anywhere. I do it. Yeah. I'm like, that's a mom that needs help. And I do what should I offer? Will they reject it? You know, as a community, I think listening and hearing and understanding, do you see moms? Do you acknowledge moms? Do you know and understand their experience? And now we do. And this report and the data, it's a story about moms in Idaho, not national data, not next door in Utah, wherever. So we can, from the community cohesion perspective, turn to our moms to offer help. You know, I can turn to my neighbor for help, so how are we turning to moms and offering that help? And they may not, again, they may not take it at first, or they may, I don't know how to delegate, right? It comes, it's like similar to organizations and succession planning and all of that. Who is going to take the task on that moms are, are doing? And this goes back to unpaid labor and, and all of those conversations. For me, it's hard to think through unpaid labor sometimes the way it's painted because I never want my kids to think that they were a burden yeah. and my momming was unpaid labor. <laughs> Gosh, that's awful. So. In the household, it's super simple. Maybe that means they're waking up a little early and making their own breakfast and learning to be a little more self-sufficient. Out in our communities, when we see moms recognizing, saying hi, telling them thank you, just thank moms for being moms and listening and being the ear because moms can be timid sometimes. We're the listeners and when we get space to talk, it could be very awkward and how do you open up and start? So just, it's like hashtag check on mom. Just check on moms. That's a good period. hashtag. Yeah, <laughs> hashtag check on mom. I like that. Well, we are running short for time. So before we do wrap up, and I'm telling you right now, we need to have to do a, a part two here on Viewpoint. Um, what stuck out to you in, in terms of, you know, going through the data and reflecting on it? Was there one point or uh, I guess one thought that stuck out to you from this report that you said, okay, I'm going to hold on to this for a long time. Yeah. Oh gosh, there's so many. But if we're going to do a part two, I'll tease. It's that if finances were not an issue, most moms would stay at home or be part time. Hmm. That was like, what? Yeah, that and the part-time piece really speaks to my heart because what I've been doing in the last 10 years as a, as a business owner myself is not just for moms, but making space for those caring bridge builders to be who they are and show up as they are and the flexibility that they need to live their lives. So knowing that most moms, if money were not an issue, they would stay home or work part-time. I think it was 16% of full-time working moms, uh, they, would, they, though, they would probably choose that and keep it but most of their moms, like, I wanna be home and I wanna be part-time. And that changes the workforce exit conversation, doesn't it? It does, and it ties into that 74% of, uh, of moms that say, you know, this is my the primary identity. Um, for you, I guess, as we start wrapping up and we go into Mother's Day, um, what advice would you have for moms out there that are feeling overwhelmed, oh. feeling burnt out? Yeah, I would say love yourself. Pause and just say, how am I? You are your best friend. You are the one person that you can never avoid, no matter how you try. So just pause, just observe you is our, our coaching prompt, Joy. You can go to our website and download a worksheet and start understanding how to take your me time for you, but just observe you, how am I, and love yourself.
and we will link to this full report again the unifying communities through motherhood a great collaboration from Spark here in Idaho and Gallup polling, the national group. Yes, that Gallup. Um, Shannon McGuire here with us. Shannon, I know folks are going to want to connect with you after this episode, and we'll try to do it again soon here on Viewpoint. But in the meantime, easiest way to connect with you and your resources. Uh, we are on Instagram. Uh, we do daily quotes that we put up and uh, SupremeMoms.com. And you can also find uh, Shannon and our, our moms on the Moms Matter yes. segment on Idaho Today with Melissa Paul. I look as, as a 30 year old man, you know, the perspective of being a mom, I, I didn't get a lot of that. So now that I get to talk with Shannon, I get to hear from some of the moms in our community. It opens up my world as I want to be a dad and be a good partner to a mother one day. So, um, all right, Shannon, thank you so much for your time. We'll have to have you back here soon. We will be right back, but Viewpoint will wrap up after this break. Wow, you really made our dreams come true. Life's better when you're under our roof. It's... Because when you feel totally protected, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. I guess that's what American Family Insurance is for. He's the wise twin. I'm talking about Save up to 23% when you bundle home and auto with American Family Insurance. Get a quote and find an agent at amfam.com. Make your first move with battery power made by steel. Right now, save $50 on the KMA 80R combi motor or the HSA 50 hedge trimmer. Real steel. NetCredit is here to say yes, even when other lenders won't. Apply online in minutes and get funds deposited the next business day or sooner. NetCredit, credit to the people. We were all in heaven up there. We had this beautiful view, and we were there less than two years before all this happened. Tuesday at 10. We've got floor planks coming up. The walls are cracking. It feels like the house is falling apart. Landslides in the Boise foothills that forced residents out of their homes nearly eight years ago. But as you can see around me, not much is left of the neighborhood on North Alto Via Court. That should never have happened. Right? That, that should have never been developed. What's left and what's next? Tuesday at 10 on KTVB. Idaho is known for its unpredictable weather. That's why KTVB's First Alert weather team is always ready to keep you in the know. When you need accuracy. When you need reliability. When you need consistency. Trust the First Alert weather team. Trust KTVB, Idaho's News Channel 7. Well, welcome back to Viewpoint. Again, thank you to our guest Shannon McGuire this week from Supreme Moms. I give another plug for the Moms Matter segment on Idaho Today. We really like to hear the perspective. It's a great community conversation. I'm a believer it does take a village. Uh, it wouldn't be a Viewpoint episode, though, if I didn't remind you about politics. May primary coming up very soon. You can head to KTVB.com. You can find our voter guide. Find what's going on in your neighborhood. Well, to all the great moms out there, we wish you a happy Mother's day this week we hope you enjoy it with your family that's all we got for you this week on viewpoint we'll see you next time